we've been told by the Detroit Institute of Art that did some of the conservation work on our, our portrait collection that some of the frames, ironically, are probably worth more than the actual portraits themselves. Um, they're, they're literally pieces of art. The oldest portrait in our collection is of Lafayette, and that portrait was commissioned by the legislature in 1837. Kind of ironic that in the Michigan Senate there should be a portrait of a, a Frenchman. Um, Lafayette came over at the age of 19 to America and um, was um, influential in the American Revolution. Washington befriended him early on and at the age of 20 made him a major general of American forces during the war. I think a lot of Americans now, because it's been so many years since the Revolution, have sort of forgotten how important a figure he was to Americans. I mean, there's so many things in our state and in our country that are named after him. Yeah, he never set foot in Michigan, as far as we know. He came back after the war and gave a series of speeches throughout the, the, the states, and uh, all 24 states, but um, Michigan wasn't a state yet, and uh, he never set foot in Michigan, as far as we know. His love of America was, was incredible. He collected soil samples, including soil from Bunker Hill, and his dying wish was that he be buried in his native France, but that he be buried in American soil. And he is, in fact, buried in American soil. His son, who was named George after George Washington, actually sprinkled the soil on his grave. Blair was elected uh, as governor in 1860. He'd served in the legislature, in the House and Senate, and um, was um, one of the founding fathers of the National Republican Party. He was from New York originally, where he studied law and um, uh, moved to Michigan as a young man. Uh, lived in Eaton Rapids for a short period of time, but then settled in Jackson. Huge advocate for, for human rights. Um, rights of women, rights of freed blacks. So he served from uh, 1860 to 1864. Uh, they served two-year terms back then, so it was two two-year terms. And he was known basically as our wartime governor for his leadership during the war, during the Civil War. Suppose I shouldn't have favorites, being the, the director of the tour guide service, but Austin Blair has always been one of my favorites. And I think really was a favorite of the citizens of the state of Michigan. It was so well thought of that all of the monuments and memorials on the grounds to the Capitol, only one of them honors an individual, and that's Austin Blair. And his statue is directly in front of the building. I have Eva McCall Hamilton, who was uh, Michigan's uh, first um, female senator, uh, first female legislator. She was from Grand Rapids. She was a teacher and hugely influential in the women's rights movement. Um, she was elected to this body right after women got the right to vote in 1920. Um, the portrait was actually commissioned and unveiled on the 75th anniversary of, of women's suffrage in 1995. So Russell Alger was um, governor of Michigan. Prior to that though, he'd served in the Civil War, enlisted as a private in the Union Army with the 5th Michigan Cavalry Regiment, which formed near Grand Rapids. Um, served throughout the war, rose to the rank of colonel of that cavalry regiment, and then eventually uh, to the rank of general. He also, at the end of the war, was very um, influential in the Grand Army of the Republic, which was an organization that was formed of uh, Union um, veterans of the Civil War. If you notice on his lapel, there's a pin. And he was also uh, heavily involved in another organization called the Military Order of the Loyal Legion of the United States, which was a group of Union um, officers who had fought in the Civil War part of the, the Michigan Cavalry Brigade, which was made up of the 1st, 5th, 6th, and 7th Michigan Cav Regiments. They were led by uh, General George Armstrong Custer. Um, the brigade fought with great distinction numerous battles throughout the war, including the Battle of Gettysburg. In fact, the brigade has been credited with helping to turn the tide of battle at Gettysburg. Um, Custer led his brigade into battle that day by standing up in his stirrups 
drawing his saber and yelling, come on you Wolverines, and led one of the most daring charges of the war at Gettysburg. Henry Crapo was uh, originally from um, Massachusetts, if I'm not mistaken, but as a young man settled in Flint, was the mayor of Flint, and I uh, was elected governor in 1864, the successor to, to Austin Blair. Crapo uh, had the role of accepting the battle flags um, from our Michigan soldiers at the end of the Civil War. It was an incredible ceremony that took place on July 4th, 1866 in the Campus Martius in Detroit. And Crapo made a solemn pledge that day that the battle flags and really the memory of the men who fought beneath them would not be forgotten or their histories left unwritten. Um, years later, his grandson, Billy Crapo Durand, um, founds the General Motors Corporation. So the Crapo name is a very important name in Michigan history. Lewis Cass, um, general during the War of 1812, Brigadier General, War of 1812, the territorial governor of the state for about 17 years. Uh, really helped shape Michigan, including designing our state coat of arms. And when this portrait was sent out for conservation as a part of the process, they took x-rays of it, and they realized with the x-rays that what appears to be the face of George Washington is painted beneath the face of Lewis Cass. And this is um, um, sort of our, our hypothesis, is back then, Artists were in the habit of painting up what they called stock portraits of famous people with the idea that if you got an order for a George Washington or an Abraham Lincoln, you'd have one painted up and you could ship it out immediately. And we think what may have happened with this artist, Thomas um, McClelland, was that he got an order for Lewis Cass and happened to already have a George Washington. So he painted out the face of George Washington with the face of, of Lewis Cass. Uh, a little bit of um, poetic justice, there is a very large state government building in downtown Lansing named after Lewis Cass and uh, in a very prominent position at the front of that building is a statue of George Washington.